Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Premier. It's such a great honor for me to stand with a mic in my hand at such an esteemed function as today. So, uh, uh, without any further ado, I'm going to call up on our our executive mayor, Alderman Del Kotzer, to come and do us the honors in officially welcoming everybody. Let's give him a hand of applause. Thank you, Evan. <laughs> um, we were discussing if we should go through all the protocol since we are a bit late, but um, we will stick to it since we've got such esteemed guests. So Muscle Bay recently saw the launch of Iconic Muscle Bay, a destination marketing campaign to showcase the beauty and other features of Muscle Bay um, that makes it unique. Speaking at the event, I challenged community members and other stakeholders to consider what makes Muscle Bay iconic. I also reminded those present that it takes consistent hard work and effort to become and remain iconic. The same can be said about innovation. Innovation is about creative problem solving. So welcome to a man who is also innovative and believe in the benefits of creative problem solving, which is our Premier Alan Windy. So today, as we welcome you all to the opening of the Joint Operations Centre, we are inviting you to celebrate an achievement which makes Muscle Bay unique. The Joint Operations Centre is unique and innovative, but it is also the result of consistent hard work and the effort towards a safer city. The Joint Operations Centre affirms our commitment to grow Muscle Bay as a safer city. Community safety is about peace of mind. Here in Muscle Bay, we believe in communities taking ownership of safety. As local governments, we help facilitate and the necessary partnerships to support communities taking ownership of their safety. The Joint Operational Centre consolidates these networks of support for community safety. We see great value in all our partners. We believe that partners collaborating with the Joint Operations Centre will act as force multipliers to ensure delivery of community safety and security uh, towards a whole of society approach. The Joint Operations Centre consolidates all these networks towards a safer community, as I've mentioned. The centre is a space to anticipate and forestall threats through collaboration. We will do this by harnessing the interdependence of fire safety, the police, neighborhood watches, with who we also work very closely and we respect them, municipal law enforcement officers, the security sector, and all other citizens of Mosa Bay. The Joint Operations Center is a one-stop shop of intelligence that informs security. Through leveraging and supporting community safety networks, and supporting them with state-of-the-art resources, housing, and innovative facility like the Joint Operations Centre, we are prepared to be proactive in preventing crime and other safety risks, but also to be clinically efficient when we need to be reached or when, um, when we need to be reactive in emergency situations. And uh, I'm not going to go through the whole establishment due to time of the centre, but we are. We roughly started in 2017 already uh, with the, the idea um, that five neighbourhood watches came up. Leon was heading in them. At that stage, he was the chairperson of the Mosa Bay CPF. Um, I think also at that stage, the, the person who won the best CPF or the best run CPF uh, in the Western Cape. So Leon came up with the idea with his team of other neighborhood watches. We worked together. Initially, we, we looked at, um, and various other members of the neighborhood watches here will remember that we looked at, at the specific piece of land close to the fire station. Um, at that stage, the idea was to establish a few containers there uh, to house uh, some of the equipment of neighborhood watches and to collaborate from there. Um, but at that stage, uh, and obviously council took that decision, we gave that land to them at the lower rate and the idea was to put up uh, uh, containers. Then um, I think the neighborhood watchers got um, to hear about the, the, the building here um, at the golf course and then uh, we also in 2020 then 
established a, a safety portfolio and by that stage I think we already started negotiating and working very closely together with the neighborhood watches. Then we started negotiating with some of the Mosso by Mosso of, uh, Golf Club members who's also here today and the Homeowners Association and at that stage um, we negotiated the deal and uh, 21, uh, 2021 in April we started with the building of this beautiful facility that we are celebrating here today. The objectives of the center is to do the following, to evaluate and distribution of information, um, handling of all incidents and handling of service delivery issues. The above coincides with the premiers and the Mosselbay municipalities key strategic focus of community safety. And although it is not a core function of local government, um, we obviously buy into that. Whenever we go out to the community and we speak to them at our IDP meetings and so on, one of the main priorities or issues that the community <coughs> raise is safety. So currently um, we see the JOC not only as our flagship project, but also as the vehicle through which we will drive various projects in our community, such as the K9 unit that we're establishing, busy establishing, and thank you, Premier, Obviously, that comes from your budget largely. We thank you very, very much for that. Then we're busy with a land grab unit, air support unit, drone support, victim support, empowerment, hostage negotiations, increasing of our own LEOs and peace officer program. Then obviously a training facility and hosting radio support. Largely, the whole idea is that all, all um, involved in the safety sector in Mosul Bay should be able to be in contact with each other through radio uh, communication. With that, obviously, we're also working very hard um, establishing a one-stop shop um, at this center. We, we're already far down the road looking at a specific app. I know other municipalities already rolled out an app. The difference with our app is that we want it to, um, as a tool to the community before we launch it. So we're almost there. We want people to be able to pay their traffic fines, municipal fines, to do GIS logging um, and for obviously um, also if there's any safety. So the idea is to have all information coming into the center in terms of uh, safety and service delivery. And then everything will be distributed and um, coordinated from the side, uh, from the center. So the Mosopay municipality is proud of this achievement and is pleased about the collaboration of the South African police services or with them and other emergency and safety services. We look forward to hosting residents, visitors, and take stocks and also take stakeholders and members of the community through this beautiful center because it's a community center. So the mayoral committee member for community safety, Councillor Leon van Dijk, our MM and Mossel Bay Council welcome you to the opening of the Mossel Bay Joint Operations Center, an innovation first of its kind in South African local government. Thank you very much. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give the mayor another round of applause. It's, it's now my pleasure to call upon the next speaker, who is uh, uh, the Minister of Police and Oversight and Community Safety. Uh, we were at the meet and greet of the Premier, when the Premier announced who the new Minister for, for this portfolio will be. And that day it was in there. But let's give a round of applause to Minister. Regan Kellen. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. I trust that you are well. I have the special honor of introducing a man that obviously needs no introduction, but they've given me literally five minutes. So there has been something that I've been saying consistently for the last two weeks and that is that criminals and gangsters have adopted the spirit in which our constitution has been drafted. I'm going to say it again, that criminals and gangsters adopted the spirit in which our constitution was drafted. Because our constitution was drafted in order to foster cooperation between national government provincial government and local government as entities and criminals have adopted that spirit of working together, of organizing, hence we have organized crime. But today, this is literally a hole in one. 
It's literal. Uh, okay, that's the higher grade people. <laughs> because ultimately what we are seeing today is amazing that this is cooperation. Yes. That this is when we are able to unify our approaches towards safety. The Premier has been on a mission since 2019 that making safety the number one priority in knowing that safety or the lack of safety prohibits people from living a life of dignity, prohibits people from living a life that has full meaning. Because we know lack of safety affects how we play, how we work, and how our families interact. So it is my honor to also state that as I was sitting next to him, I was thinking, what am I going to say about a man that doesn't need to be introduced? Was that he mentioned roughly two and a half minutes ago that we were painting a station in Cryfontein. And the Premier was literally also, please don't tell him, he was painting outside of the lines. <laughs> but if I think of the Premier, that is what he's always been doing. Always pushing the boundaries, coloring outside of the lines, because the need is so big. And he colors outside of the line, and if I can take a leaf out of the counselor's book that he had an acronym for unique, I would like to have an acronym for paint. Because what you're doing now is going to be painted throughout this particular district, but also through this province. It's going to be painted right through this country. And it's going to be a message of hope, a message of inspiration, that we are able to collaborate, we are able to foster working relationships, and we are able to then see that crime is reduced. The Premier has been very clear that we need to reduce the murder rate by 50%, even though we know that one murder is one murder too many. So if we take paint, and this morning Unique was then so eloquently brought out, so paint is that we will continue to persevere. We will continue to be proactive. We will continue to be at pains because we see the need. If I look at AIM, that we are aiming, and the letter A stands for AIM, because we aren't aiming at nothing. We are being very strategic. We are using evidence and data to make sure that we reach our objectives. If I look at the letter I, we are innovative. This is the number one integrated approach in terms of bringing community safety, bringing stakeholders and all role players effectively together so that we adopt the spirit in which the constitution was written because people died for our constitution. People went to jail for our constitution and we are adopting that spirit in knowing we need to work together. The letter N is that we will not be nonchalant about our approach. We will be very determined, but we will also not be non-committal. Is non-committal a word? <laughs> because we will be committed in our approach and obviously the T is that I want to ask what will the T stand for? Teamwork. Teamwork is the obvious one. I deliberately asked to show a classic example of teamwork and then it was the councillor responsible for safety that answered first. And that's a classic example of showing teamwork. So it is my pleasure and it is my honor to introduce a man that has been painting outside of the lines. He's been very deliberate in that, in extending the pegs, but also making sure that in extending the pegs, we don't exclude anyone. That we bring role players together. And so I'm delighted that a number of cabinet ministers are here as well, together with the districts and the various mayors. So thank you, thank you so much. May he continue to paint outside of the, of the, 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 the Ram there, because criminals have been organizing and working together and we are breaking, I'm gonna say it again, we are breaking organized crime and we are doing everything in our power to make sure that together with SEPs, together with all our departments in terms of the Western Cape safety plan in the Western Cape, local governments, entities like the CPFs, our neighborhood watches. We have one neighborhood watch here that says genoeg is genoeg. The Premier said to us, wanneer het genoeg ooit genoeg is? So is that determined to say that ons daar baie gesê genoeg is genoeg? There's another neighborhood watch that had their name Premier and their name is Zero Crime. 
neighborhood watch. And this is a man that is painting outside of the lines and he would like to see zero crime within our province. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Premier of the West Mr. Alan Beatty. Thank you very much. Bye bye, donkey. Goweni, um, good day. What an honor and a privilege it is to be here today at this amazing function. This, dare I say, Mayor, this iconic function in iconic Mossel Bay. Yeah. yeah. I watched that. I watched that uh, that tourism uh, program that you ran, and it was iconic, and it stood out. It was excellent. It's uh, what we expect here in this uh, municipality. Um, I noticed that people at our table sometimes are quite careful about what they say because uh, when you say too much about this municipality, yeah. it was Anna Burgemeester's <laughs> <laughs> But we're here in Moscow at the moment. And uh, we are here to celebrate this unique, special, leading from the front innovation. And you know, when I sat down at our table, there's a little board. I don't know if you've all got these boards on your tables. Yes, you all do. Excellent. So in our government, when you see the word VIP, we have things called VIP. They're called Vision Inspired Priorities. So I like you've got VIPs on all of your tables. And this Vision Inspired Priority is safety as the cornerstone for exponential growth for a greater Mossel Bay region. And I think nothing says it like that. You know, I have been in government for quite a long time. And before I was in government and being in government, my passion is jobs and the economy. And if your passion is jobs and the economy and you have to say, well, what have we got to do about making sure we can get jobs and the economy going? The thing that stares you right in the face is safety. It's the thing that gets in the way of our ability to grow our economy, attract investment, grow jobs. It is the biggest obstacle. And that's why in our government, and I too, Minister, thank you for the introduction. I'm so glad that uh, we have so many of our ministers here. Because in our safety plan, every minister has a portfolio uh, and every portfolio has got something to do with safety or has a safety component in what they do. It doesn't matter whether you're education or agriculture. It doesn't matter whether you're economic development or local government. It doesn't matter whether you're infrastructure or mobility. It all has a role to play and all has to come together where we need to make sure, uh, Minister Allen, that it's safety. Of course, we have made some other changes, uh, like police oversight, and I'll say a little bit, of a, a bit more about that just now. But I want to say to everybody here in the region and partners, because I think the place stands out. It's unbelievable what we saw here and what you have launched here today, really leading from the front. But what is behind it is partnership. If you get the nexus of partnership right, you can achieve anything, and you can change anything, and you can make the biggest difference ever. And I think what you have done is absolutely outstanding, and you are definitely fair for. I saw what you've delivered in reality here the other day in a presentation as part of one of the programs we have called uh, PDIA, Problem Driven Iterative Adaptation. It's a program that we've uh, developed, comes from Harvard University. And uh, Minister Allen saw this too. Um, I actually think uh, our Minister of Infrastructure was there. Yes, he was. Um, where you take a problem and you get hold of the whole of society, you get all the partners involved and you tackle that problem. You don't tackle the big problem, but you identify two or three levers within that big problem. And there was a presentation that stood out for me. I uh, took that presentation, and uh, I talk about it often, 
But what stood out for me was it was how the city of Cape Town are trying to pull all of the partners together in a single space with technology and innovation and making sure that all of those partners sit in the space that we can actually make it safer. It's a PowerPoint presentation. Some of the reality is already there, but at the moment, it's a PowerPoint presentation. In Mossel Bay, it is a reality. And so bye bye geluk, want jylle is voor. And I love competition, and I'm sure you're going to put a lot of pressure on some other places, and that's great. But that also is co-competition. Because speaking to the mayor, he said that uh, I think last weekend you spent with JP, who's leading the presentation out of Cape Town. And there are many things that Cape Town have done that's ahead of what we're doing. There's many things that are happening in Vescus, but they stick in this. But if we all work together and we bring those partnerships together and the knowledge together, we start to really push the boundaries and we start to make big, big differences. I must say, that there is probably one thing that I don't know if any other place, no matter what they do, is going to be able to beat you. Want ek weet nie van enige plek waar jy hierdie vernootskap by mekaar gebring. Around safety, we've got the, all the tech and the place, but at the same time you've got a 19th hole in a view like this. <laughs> I don't know if there's any place that's going to be able to beat that. But that also talks about a key partnership. Who would ever think that a golf club would be the initiating partner in the place that says, let's pull this together? Where you actually have helicopters landing in front of you with <coughs> golfers dodging around the edges of the helicopters. But it really is a beacon that can stand proud. And so I want to say, first of all, to every single person where the vision started, where the fights happened about not there or not here, where the containers for a neighborhood watch to store some stuff turned into an iconic place that is leading safety. Well done to every single person who has played a role in getting us here today. Congratulations. Thank you. And you can give all of those people a Thank you. In our provincie het ons een paar areas waarop ons focus. Safety, 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 jobs, and the economy, and dignity. Dignity and well-being. Those are the three areas. You know, when you set about doing something, don't have 56 things. What are the three things you're going to focus on? And then when you're responsible for one of those three things, what are the three, what are the three things or the few things within that one responsibility that you're going to focus on. And of course, I'll come to safety now, but if we take, for example, in jobs, what are those things? And so in jobs, what is holding back jobs, besides safety as a big issue that I said in the beginning, but it's also about infrastructure. So you have seen we've made an announcement, and we've now got an infrastructure ministry and an infrastructure department being built at the moment, because what is our problem? Safety is our problem in economic development and growth, but so is infrastructure. The infrastructure investment into energy produ production in our country is a massive failure. The investment into long-term water is not happening fast enough. The infrastructure rail to relieve the pressure on our road systems is not operating in many parts of our country. In long-term thinking and planning, we're not putting sewage infrastructure in quick enough. We're not infrastructure across the board really needs to be focused on. If any region in our country knows what the pressure is about more and more people coming to your municipality, your towns, the West Cape knows, the Western Cape knows about this. This municipality and these municipalities know about it. The pressure is on. Uh, as Minister Bradell says, we've got uh, 1.4 million people coming to this province or population growth in this province between now and 2030. That's just over seven years' time. In seven years' time, are we going to have more shacks or less shacks? We better have less shacks. If we don't get that right, 
Well, then we saw what happened in, in uh, KZN in July last year. We had a, a mess, and it can explode. We've got to get it right, and infrastructure is key, let alone what a province normally de delivers on infrastructure. We've taken the same approach with mobility, and it is about how we get mobility right because people need to be able to get to school, get to work, get the economy moving, get your goods through the harbour. Mobility is a critical issue, and we have to think about it differently. But they all align into jobs. Another interesting, uh, another interesting uh, change that's happened in our government is our previous Minister of Finance and Economic Development is now the Minister of Education. But what's interesting there is education was always seen as this department that sits in the social cluster. No. The education department sits in the center of the economic cluster. The education department's job is to prepare our children for a job in the future. It must be aligned into the economy. And it's really interesting to see some, you just change a position and a viewpoint and you start to see different alignments coming. But let me come back to safety. And of course, as uh, Minister Allen said, not so long ago, we made safety this big priority in our government. Something that the Constitution doesn't put a lot of focus on for a province. The Grondwet say, police sits at a national level. Provinces, our job is oversight at a province. Oversight of police, and of course, uh, Minister, with the PNP comes to cabinet tomorrow, right? The uh, policing needs and priorities, which is our oversight document that we put together. Because that's what goes into that oversight. I want to push the boundaries, I want to paint outside of the lines, and we're busy with the process because I do believe that provinces should have much more management when it comes to policing than at the moment in the current system. National government should have oversight of the provinces and not the other way around. Ma, there's a story for another one. We set ourselves a target in this province of halving the murder rate. We also said that, uh, how do we do this? We have to have two focus areas. One, just sitting at the table here now, speaking to General Fosco, we don't have enough resources and we don't have enough budget in our policing system. We know that. So the first thing we did, as difficult as it is, is we took a billion rand. And we said, let's take a billion rand of our budget and put it into extra boots on the ground. And let's deploy those boots to those hotspots, those murder hotspots. <coughs> and uh, I know that when people phone me from Mossel Bay and say, Vaas ons liep officieren, I say to them, you are not getting any. Uh, just as I said the other day when a councillor phoned me from from Ocean View, and I want to say to you in Mossel Bay, you have a different environment here to many parts of our province. A desperate call from Ocean View to say, please, 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 I need leap officers because people are just being shot left, right, and center with the gangsters. And I had to say to that council, I'm sorry, you're not a murder hotspot. But Minister Allen and his team have actually figured out a way of how to get around that. We've just <coughs> inaugurated the next 100 LEAP officers, and we now have 1,100 LEAP officers that are deployed into our hotspots, our 13 hotspots. And that's where they're deployed, using data, evidence, to help partner with the police to bring down the murder rate. That's their job. We also have a reaction unit now. So Minister Regan, along with our partnership with policing, can actually say, let's, let's send the reaction unit to Ocean View if necessary, or as we have done now um, to Manenberg. Uh, to places that really need it, that perhaps aren't part of the scientific deployment. But the interesting thing is for me, we said this is a 10 year plan, halve the murder rate, because of course that number destroys me every time I think about it. 4,000 people are murdered in this province every year. You know, on Saturday afternoon, there's Jim. Um, he arranged it along with Lamine, she's not here, but uh, on Saturday afternoon I joined a couple of our colleagues uh, at an event in Hanover Park. It's Women's Month, 
and uh, I joined this event with probably 100, uh, 150 mothers, sisters, grannies, aunts in this event. And so probably much like this, tables, 10 ladies per table. What really hit me was that at every single table in that room in Hanover Park, where most of those moms or sisters or grannies or aunts walked to that community center. So they were just from that region around that community center. At every table, two and sometimes three of those moms at that table had lost a child in the last year. The one lady at the first table, her daughter, she lost two weeks ago. And she was in the room. I, couldn't have, I don't know if I would ever have been able to do that if it had been my child. And you know those ladies in that room, do you know what they do? They're all on the neighborhood watch and the women's network. And they're all there at night when most people are sleeping in that neighborhood or walking the streets trying to make it safer. That day, I knew this safety plan is the right decision for this government. I know because of what those women said on Saturday that what you are doing here is exactly the right decision to be making. Pulling this part, these partnerships together of civil society, neighborhood watches, of businesses, of people that are funding these kind of uh, operations of police, of our traffic and fire services, our councils, our business chambers. I know that the Ombudsman now has a desk here. How amazing is that? That there's a desk that the Ombudsman can come and actually hear from citizens, what is your issue? How can we help it? And we learn from all of these things. It is critical that we get this right that we bring safety to the citizens of this province. It is critical. <coughs> and so halving the murder rate actually, in a way, is how can that even be the target? <coughs> but you have to begin somewhere. And the interesting thing for me is when our national police minister stands up in parliament and announces murder statistics in our country. There are 13 areas in our country, and only 13, because we saw that the murder rate's actually gone up in South Africa by 26%. But there are 13 areas in our country which just happen to be the 13 areas that align with the deployment of those 1,100 LEAP officers. And you know that Nyanga, which has always for a long time been the murder capital of South Africa, the place that we should be the most embarrassed about when it comes to the murder numbers, is not in the top 10 here. Gugulheti is not in the top 10 here. Minister, I think Gugulheti is now not even in the top 30. Outside. Outside the top 30. How's that? Cryfontaine have got almost 42% reduction in their murder rate. So those 13 areas are at the least plateauing in murder or decreasing. How do we grow this? How do we take this learning? And you know how we do the deployment? We do it through data. We do it through a plan and through data. And these officers are deployed 24-7 in partnership with the police. And we know that they must deploy, be deployed on a Friday evening and a Saturday evening and a Sunday evening. We know, sh we know from the data what time and in which areas. Because we must become smarter at how we deal with safety and crime. We must end up having technology like we walk through today and how we utilize that technology to make sure it becomes safer. Because Minister Allen said the criminals have learned a long time ago how to collaborate, work with each other, understand the ecosystem. I'll tell you who takes the most notice of ESCOM's load shedding schedule, the criminals. 
Hulle weet wanneer gaan die lichte af, en daar gaan hulle tyke. So we need to get ahead of it. I've seen it in our center, and in the provincial building, and we need to actually see if we can get one here. We've got a screen, just like you've got all of those screens, we've got a screen that's, that permanently comes up with the load shedding levels, and then as soon as we see there's load shedding coming in, then we inform our schools. We inform, we let people know that you, just so you ha- don't, maybe don't know, but are our neighborhood watchers being informed that in 22 minutes there will be load shedding, or even in five minutes there will be load shedding. You need to be more vigilant. Because the criminals must not be able to get ahead of us. We have to use technology and innovation. And we've done that and learned so many lessons. We ourselves have learned so many lessons from the day when we implemented it to today because of COVID-19. We learned during COVID-19 how many infections were happening, where they were happening, GIS mapped every single day. We put it on a dashboard for the public to see. What you could see was what was happening every 24 hours. What we could see below the dashboard, which is what you actually want in your control rooms, what we could see is how many COVID-19 cases there were GIS mapped by household and street. And that's how we knew where the hotspots were. Where we could zoom in on a hotspot and say, go there because there's a lot of spread and we need to slow it down. We then could do the same with uh, vaccinations. We could detect which were super spreader events. We knew that an event at a university ended up in exponentially growing cases of COVID-19. We knew that a nightclub was a super spreader event. And when we went to go and investigate, we found that the nightclub locked people up at curfew. You weren't allowed to go out, but you spent the whole night drawing in that uh, club. And when curfew ended, you all went home. Well, that didn't last very long because our data picked it up and we zapped that guy. Then I said, if we can do that with a virus, why can't we do that with crime? How come we don't know that same data and detail, hotspot mapping with crime? And that's the interesting and innovative stuff that's happening right now. And perhaps more so in the violence prevention Because remember, safety is not only about boots on the ground and policing. What we also have to do, and that is all of our challenge. What is the next layer to what we're doing here? Wanneer jy gaan nou nog een, ek weet nie of jou hou, regulaties die jou gaan toelaat om nog op te gaan. But, nie. Ok, so wanneer jou so langs aan hou, are your business chamber offices going to be there? Are your social development offices going to be close by? Are you going to be linking economic activity to safety? Are you going to be deploying social workers linked to the hotspots that are identified through this data? And how are you using that data? Violence prevention, we've just launched our violence prevention uh, data that's run by the Department of Health. Hectus detail in our hospitals, which is now 27 of our hospitals. So we know that trauma cases, our health department deals with. Even if it's a body, the body has to have an autopsy, right? If it's a stabbing, the person ends up in our hospital. If it's a gunshot, the person ends up in our hospital. So if it's a rape case, the person ends up in our hospital. So our hospital data I'm sorry to say, is much more accurate than our policing data. And so, well, how do we bring that together? So how, in the next iteration, is our violence prevention data going to come out here at this level so we make decisions? And it's exciting, at the same same time very scary. So in violence prevention, I mean, there's a lot of detail in that dashboard, and we need to work out how we integrate it here. But I'll just give you one example. Um, and I give it over and over again to our team because I want to know what we're doing about it. So in violence prevention, gender-based violence, our hospital data can tell us that women, pregnant women, who are abused, are generally abused in the second trimester. They are abused by men between the ages of 24 and 34 and in the following hotspot GIS mapped areas. How's that for information? The question is, 
Die area where the boy can't see this roy. Okay, great, we know that. That's where the most females who are pregnant are abused. What are we doing with that information? So now I want to know what we're going to try in this area. And maybe it's more social workers. Maybe we're going to call all the men into the room and we're going to sort them out. I don't know what it is, but we need to try things and we need to see what's going to work because we need to bring that number down. Because if we don't get the violence prevention right, well then what's going to happen is next year we're just going to need more police and the year after more police and the year after more police. We've got to come at the causalities. Christmas. We've got to be able to get those young boys, those young men and women who are now stepping off the path. We've got to be able to bring them back in, send them to a program, a boot camp, teach them how to weld and cook and whatever else we teach them there, make them proud citizens, clean of drugs and whatever else they were there for, and ready to go out into the world. And Minister Allen and the police have just done a partnership where the first 60, uh, yeah? 79. 79 Christmas students are now being deployed in partnership with SAPS to our police stations so that they, these Christmas students, in a police station will actually do the affidavits and the admin work to relieve another uniformed officer to get out there to help fight crime. How cool is that? But what a big difference you're making to that young person's life. On their way to the gangs, and now suddenly they've got a future ahead of them. Those young boys who are risk takers being pulled into the gangs are now being diverted through violence prevention, are now being identified and given opportunity to stay in some program that they become a risk taker later on in life. They become an entrepreneur who's a risk taker. They become a positive add to our society. That is violence prevention. That is getting ahead of the curve. And I mean, there's so many different areas that we focus on here. And I know that I stand between you and lunch and another meeting. So I can talk about uh, ombudsmans and uh, GBV, rural safety, rural safety minister. Um, there are so many things that I am uh, not dealing with yet. But I just want to say that what an amazing event this is today, what amazing opportunity this is, what an amazing partnership. And of course, the partnership is not completed and probably never will be completed. I know that the next level from our side is not the contribution to the K9 unit, but is to get our own traffic systems and camera systems integrated here into your systems. Because if we don't get the integration and partnership right, we're not going to get in. I did speak to Dalin Mitchell last night, and he apologizes that he can't be here because it's critical. We've got to get all of these parts. In actual fact, uh, I mean, we should have been saying that uh, that uh, that meeting that you spoke about should actually have been here tomorrow. There's half the cabinet here already, and we've got cabinet tomorrow, and I don't know why I'm driving back. Am I allowed to give executive orders to the other ministers to say cabinet is here tomorrow? I see who challenges you. Yeah, I could have a motion of no confidence by the end of the day. Um, but anyway, the reason that we're here is to celebrate. The reason that we are here is to draw a line in the sand and say to those criminals out there, we're coming for you. We are using our organized partnerships to make sure that we are building a safer society. And from this region, this region, Mossel Bay, the other municipalities around Mossel Bay and the district itself, we are saying, net so as I beat, waar genoeg is genoeg, en ons gaan nou verandering bring, en we are going to exponentially move to another level, and we are going to lead from the front from this region. So I want to say to you, well done, congratulations, we will all put shoulder to the wheel in this partnership going forward, en ons wil kyk en sien, wat die verandering kom uit hierdie gedeelte van ons land, waarvoor ons allemaal lief is, en die leiderskap wat hier uitkom, but for other than not only here in this district, the Gardner district, not only in this province, but in this country. We've got to lead change and everyone must step up wherever we can. And you guys are certainly doing it here. Thank you very much.
It is my honor to call on our executive deputy mayor, Alderman Cliffy Bayman, to do the honors. Uh, Alderman. Cliffy. You have a round of applause. Thank you, uh, program director. Uh, I just got about 10 pages here. Uh, so please bear with me. But uh, I will cut it down because most of it will be on the screen. <laughs> uh, yeah. MMC, you are ready. Okay. No event just happens. It is people who make it happen, and although when a function is complete, people do not pay real attention. I would want to ask you just to hear of the involvement of all parties and individuals to make this event and the item happen. We just launched on Thursday last week our new tourism theme with the premier alluded to iconic Muscle Bay. We believe this center would be an icon and a beacon of hope not only for our community, but also in the province. Uh, I want to start by thanking the council for the vision. And here I'm referring to our mayor's five strate strategic plans for this term. And, uh, one of it is a portfolio of safety. It's an integrated part of our strategic five-pointer for this term. And we are, here we are today, within a year since the last elections, Premier. Um, and Premier, it wasn't, it wasn't that difficult. It wasn't that difficult. And you know why? We had a lot of challenges, but Mosul by stable political environment definitely pulled us through, through here. To all the visitors, especially the Premier and all our cabinet ministers, all mayors, deputy mayors, MACO members and councillors, even from our neighboring uh, municipalities, and also a special word of thanks for our mayor, our own mayor Dirk Kotzer, and the MM for allowing the free reign in making decisions. And this is coming from our MMC, of course, Nam. The municipal manager for driving and ensuring they support all relevant departments, SAPS, Correctional Services, the Fire Department, CPF Chairman, and provincial traffic, as well as local, uh, our municipal traffic, our tourism for the exhibition. The jock, NPC management, Kerry, Lindy, Booty, the MM, who tirelessly work to get all in order. Our, pro, uh, our divisional heads and officials, special thanks to our IT and maintenance departments. Also to all our directors, as the Premier also said that safety is a part of all, all departments in all uh, municipalities and uh, the special thanks to also to Jabwe Boer Putsi and all his officials that helped with this uh, uh, process. Andre Steenkamp who assisted with IT and CCTV, my assistant at the job. Ferran, Aline, Benita, and Vali with arrangements and startup to the caterers as well as the decorator, the golf club and home association, associate, homeowners association for ensuring that there's not that too much trouble, the contractor for building works and maintenance. This is only the sixth page. <laughs> MSEC for hosting CCTV and interim capacity and also for the alarm system 
when we were only operating for a day in the day. Our sponsors, as I mentioned, as you can see on the screen there, um, and also for the decorators for the flowers on the tables, the artists decorating Lorenda and team inside, and also the statue sponsored by Sheena and Johan Dell for collecting it in Uniondale. Our parks department for the beautification, Standard Bank for the plant, our colleagues that assisted with the helicopters, and SOPs and outlays of the heliports. If we left, if we left anyone out, it is not on purpose. But we acknowledge everyone who helped to the success of this event today. Um, and I want to conclude by saying that if, I, if there is anybody that feels that he or she has been left out, please don't shoot the messenger. I thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, on behalf of the administration side, so, sorry, M.M. Uh, I can't. I can't. I can't finish here without acknowledging the hard work of the M.M.C. Yeah. Leon Van Dijk. Let's have a big round of applause. You know, Leon put so much in here that I believe that when he was getting home at night, he was a very tired person. So in that regard, I would also like to thank you, Landy, for your assistance and being on the side of Leon in this venture by pulling this thing through. And Leon, today you can be a proud MMC of your portfolio. I thank you. Beautiful, absolutely.